if we will be interviewing. Today we will be interviewing none other than D Derek Salmon, and he's also known as DLS Music. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, you know, blessed, highly favored, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm doing good. How about yourself? I am blessed. Thank you. Um, so today we're not going to just drill you today. We're just going to get to know a little bit about you. So um, okay. first and foremost, for all of us that don't know a lot about you, could you please enlighten us and tell us who you are? Well, I'm uh, Derek Silman, a.k.a. DLS uh, Music, also a.k.a. DJ DLS. So um so pretty much uh, born and raised Dallas, Texas. Uh, now, as far as my uh, my connection with God, I've been in the church all my life, you know, straight away, just like everybody else. And um, as far as like the music side, I started making the music based off of the traumatic stuff that I dealt with growing up. And so a lot of the music that I put out is very thought provoking, is very meaningful, um, and it's a lot and it's real. And so I pretty much as far as the music, um, I take the pain and the hurt and I put it into songs that's going to minister to those who are lost in transition. And uh, just a short thing about Lost in Transition, my ministry Lost in Transition is like I was um, I was trapped in sin. Now I'm born again. Sometimes I feel like I'm struggling because I was lost in transition. And all of us are like lost in transition. Any point of our lives, we always have that point where we might be, you know, lost in trying to transition into the man and the woman of God that, you know, that God has for us and wants us to be. And sometimes I still feel a little lost in some different areas just to be transparent. So that's just like a little bit about me and some of the music that I um, that I put out. Okay, um, I read your bio um, that you sent in to us. And I've as I was reading, my heart goes out to you because you've been through a whole lot and it's very repetitive. Like you, you get out of one thing, something else happens, you know, and, and I just want to tell you that I'm grateful that you're still here and you're able to process things the way that you're processing them and the way that you are handling those things to be a network and an outreach to other people who very well could have possibly not have been able to handle it the way that you did, like the trauma and the things that took place, okay? So I just want to uh, thank you for making this type of ministry your outlet. Yeah. Um, Speaking on your personal trauma and your music, um, how does your personal journey in life experiences influence your music? Um, His motivation. Um, I look at it as a motivation. I will take like something that I was just dealing with maybe last week and put it into a song like the uh, song uh, Stronger. Um, I started off saying uh, I've been going through the same mess for a few years, had a lot of um, fears and I shed a lot of tears, drinking like a fool, hold your cup up, cheers. So it's like I'm saying that, hey, um, yes, I'm a believer. Yes, that um, I believe in God. Yes, but guess what? I still struggle. Sometimes um, I still deal with certain things, but I don't allow those things to take me out or to take me in, to have me going down into a rabbit hole. So a lot of the music mm -hmm. that I put out or a lot of the struggles that I go through, I take the struggle and I put it into the music. It's sort of like therapy. And so, like, if I if I don't have a counselor or anybody to talk to, and if it is just me, I will literally take something that I'm going through and put it inside of a song. So I use the the trauma that I'm going through as therapy. And a lot of times, um, after a while, once you continue to put that that um uh, that trauma into an outlet that is healthy, guess what? You'll be able to heal a lot faster. Okay, that makes perfect sense. I like that. Um, have you found out um as when you started doing your music, uh, how have your listeners resonated with your music differently? 
um, once they knew the backstory behind your music on certain songs? Have you ever um thought about like how does them listening to it resonate with them? Um, I've had a, a few people tell me that um my song, the song Stronger, is that they would say that, hey, I went through that exact same thing. I lost this person, I lost that person, I found myself going out of control, I found myself drinking and doing all this other stuff. And yo, that song right there really touched me. And so uh you know, I've had a lot of people also, there's another song that I was being very transparent on um, called The Vent Freestyle that I was literally just venting and I was just talking about what I was currently going through and I would get like, you know, responses saying, hey, that song right there really ministered to me and it, and it opened up my eyes and it was very thought provoking. And so for me, if I heard someone saying that, hey, your song or what you said helped me to change my mind frame and to change my thought process, that's a win for me. Absolutely. Um, have you experienced any challenges or breakthroughs in translating your personal trauma into a song? Um, um, as far as like a universal message? Um, now, as far as a universal message, I mean, even as far as the music, I do keep it, I do keep it real. Now, when I first started um doing gospel hip hop, I wasn't putting a lot of my testimony in there. I was kind of like how you know, Lecrae 116 was just strictly just gospel until I realized that, hey, you got to be able to put you in there. You got to find your own style. You got to find your own identity and put it inside the music. You can't be you can't be like 116. You can't be like everybody else. So you have to be able to fit you. And uh, early on, that was the ch the most challenging thing that I had to deal with was being too real in the songs, you know, um, the song, We Need Change. I start off saying every time I turn on the TV, I get an instant headache. But I also say, uh, I said, um, I said something, I was saying, pulling uh, pulling, uh, pe pulling, people in like a fish. And I said, people struggling, losing jobs, but they don't really give a ish. And so I had to think about like, what would they say if uh if I said something close to that word, will they judge me because I said them like no, I have to really be me. And so early on, the challenge of um putting into the music saying, hey, that I deal with trauma from um, you know, losing my mom at an early age. I deal with trauma where I constantly had this thing of abandonment issues. I had this, you know, challenge of trauma going through certain things in life, not feeling accepted. And so early on, it was a challenge trying to find my identity when it comes to, um, you know, music, ministry, and even life, period. Okay. Um, how in what ways do you use your platform as a gospel artist to contribute to that positive change? Um, will you are you the type to reach out and, and offer help and find avenues of for other people to be able to reach and teach and touch other people as well? Um, or well, I should ask, are you doing it for yourself as therapy? Or are you doing it for your your fans? I'm doing it for everybody. Every, anybody that is like me, that is, might be going through something that's similar to mine, it's all, you know, it's all for them. It doesn't matter if you're young, old, male, female. The, the music is for everybody because everybody goes through something in life. Everybody has has a point in their life where they have been lost in transition. Everybody has a um, you know, something in their life where they feel discouraged. Everybody has something in life where they don't have no core values. They're not standing on nothing. And so that's what I pretty much do it for. I do it for everybody. It's for the people. It's for believers, non-believers. It doesn't matter. If someone has a, you know, if someone's able to get um, something from the testimony that I'm, you know, that I'm saying to the people, that's a win-win for me. So the music is for everybody. Okay. Do something for me. Describe yourself in one word. Um, 
let me see, motivated. And why did you choose that specific word? It's um because my work ethic. Um, I have sometimes it's good and bad, but it's like when I am working on a project, in whether if it's music or DJing or anything. I am focused, I'm laser focused on that project and I am motivated because a lot of times when God gives me stuff to work on, I sometimes get a glimpse of what might have, what this, this might impact to make an impact to this person. So I'm late, I'm laser focused. So I'm more Yo, motivated. Can't you. you can't, you can't hear me. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Can you guys hear us? Yes. Just... Yeah. yeah. You need this. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. You know, we had technical difficulties back to the regularly scheduled program. Yes. Uh, and, I, I, and see, I like to put humor in everything as well. But I am a little bit more serious when it comes to the the uh the music so it's like motive when i'm i'm motivated um and sometimes it can be a good and a bad thing sometimes you know the good thing you know you stay focused laser focused and try to get the um the thing done uh but then it can be a bad thing because you can't be a little bit too consumed so it has to be a balance when it comes to being motivated and things like that. You gotta say, okay, I need to get some kind of sleep at any point in the day. I need to, I need right. to be able to chill. So uh it's, uh motivation. Um for those who just come in, could you please go on oh, and mute? Thank you. Um, and I asked that question because earlier you said that you experience abandonment, right? Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people that have experienced abandonment, most of them are stuck in that state of mind, right? Yeah. A lot of people don't come out of it. They use that as they age. Nobody ever, you know, a lot of them, some people get upset because the other people did make it out. You see what I'm saying? And then there's some who still want to stay stuck in that place. So you can feel as, as you're being abandoned or you can be a testament or a testimony to somebody else that yeah. said you don't have to be in that same place that you was brought up in. You can be the change. You can be that difference, you know? And I was listening to your music and I saw that, you know, I listen, I, I like to hear the words first. I'm not I'm not so big on the sound. It's mm -hmm. the words. Like, where are you coming from? Are you coming from a broken place? Are you coming from experience? Are you uh coming from a place that somebody else told you about? Or was it real life experiences? So mm -hmm. we're gonna get into your songs. Uh, but before we do that, I would like to we have a conference that's coming up which is the Worldwide Fleet DJs Conference. It's um, the 13th annual uh, Fleet DJ Conference, which is on July the 18th through the 22nd. And it's a four day event in Orlando, Florida. And uh, we have different networking parties. We have listening sessions, different panels, artists, tastemakers, uh, models, and other DJs. So you are more than welcome to um check about check into that. And um there is a website to go and it's uh fleetdjs.com. Yeah. So um I think well we can get yeah, www.fleetdjs.com. And if you want to be a part of that. Um we hope to see you there. It's a lot of fun. It's you get to meet a lot of different people. It's very exciting. I went a couple of times and it's interesting. Yeah, I'll be there. You'll be able to see me there and the rest of the people that's in the room to support you. Um, so we're gonna talk about your music. The song that you chose today is called We Need Change, right? Mm hmm Why did you choose that song? Man, like honestly, what what's going on in the world right now is that we need change. Like um, one thing now, this is this is actually different from when I originally wrote the song. 
when I originally wrote the song, like I said at the beginning, the first couple of lines said, every time I turn on the TV, I get an instant headache. I was literally looking at TV and all it was was so much drama. It was so much drama on social media. It was so much drama in the world. It's like, where do we have peace at? Um, and it's sort of like, even, you know, believers, even people of God, there's drama in the church. Every time you turn around, there's this person dealing with that situation. Is this passed over her getting exposed for this? Then is this such, sister such and such over here done got caught looking at somebody? It's so much drama. But I just realized the reason that we're so defeated as believers because we're not willing to change. A lot of us get comfortable in dealing with that drama. And so since we are comfortable dealing with that drama, I just, I was just like, <laughs> we need change. And then, you know, um, I said, stop with all the nonsense killing, stop with the crazy division. That part right there, the division, not only just in the world, but also in God's house, you know, God's believers, we have so much division. There's so many clicks on one end and so many people that all we're doing, we're supposed to be coming together and helping each other out, but we're so busy fighting each other. And that goes with the world and with God. So that was like the main motivation for the song, We Need Change. Man, I, I saw the name, I listened to the song. I'll be like, this song, my alter ego. I'm like, what? Every time you sit down and you hear it, I don't even watch TV. And people are like, you don't watch TV? No. Because when you turn it on, it's the news. Somebody killing somebody. Somebody scamming somebody. It's a new church being built. Everybody taking up offering. The pastor driving a Rolls Royce. You know, stuff like that. Everybody complaining about money. You know, they took the, you. they make church as a show thing now. It's not exactly. the same like it used to be. Um, people when they took it and made let people watch church on the phones and stuff, <laughs> they don't even really want to care to go to the church house. It's supposed to be a spiritual hospital, mm -hmm. right? But all the hell break loose in the church. You go in the church expecting something. But other people, some people go in there trying to see what Santa Sue got on, want to see whose skirt gonna be the shortest or who who the preacher gonna look at and who we gonna call name the most mm -hmm. and then they and then about this these coins you know most of it's about these coins now now that you can cash out them you can sell them you don't even have to walk around they'll walk to you mm -hmm. it, it, it has changed times has brought about change now and it's not a good change there's no more big mamas, everybody cubbing with their kids, smoking with their kids, you know. Nobody want to wear their skirts down for, further enough to keep people from looking type mm -hmm. thing. Um, you find most drama in the church house. Yeah. And because you suited and booted does not mean you're going to make it in. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's so judgmental now. A lot of people don't meet people where they're at. You can't go and, and minister to people in a two-piece suit on the street corner. They're not going to pay you no attention because you already feel like to them that you've already arrived. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes you have to dilute yourself because it's not even about us. Mm -hmm. If we want to see as much change as we speak of, we have to be that change. Don't do so much talking and do action. A lot of people say you got to have a title to give a message. Titles are just titles. Be you. Let them see the God in you. And if that's your calling through music, then that's your calling. If that's your outreach to, that's your vision, don't let nobody else change your vision. Because mm -hmm. don't nobody have that vision to even speak on because it was given to you and not everybody. So the things that you're doing and your music, it can reach a lot of younger people and that's what we need in this generation. And the sound is up to be all of that. That's what we need. Because now these kids are so quick to get bored so fast. For real. And we stuck on traditional stuff. So we have to grow up with the kids. We have to, you know, change stuff to benefit them because they are they are our tomorrow. So what I want you to do now is um give us a drop. We're gonna introduce, I want you to introduce this song, right? But get up, give us a drop. 
saying that you're rocking with the gospel fleet DJs, introduce the song, and then either carry or um I got it. Yeah, okay. So he's gonna play it for us once you uh do our drop, okay? Okay. Let me go ahead and get together. Just let me know. I'm saying so um yo, yo, yo. This your boy, DLS Music, rocking with the Gospel Fleet DJs. You're about to hear the song, We Need Change. Check it out. It will definitely bless you. We will not let you get away with yeah. this. Right here, yeah. right now, is where we draw the line. Yeah. The world is waking up. And change is yeah. coming, whether you like it or not. Thank you. People make it cool to cheat. People make it cool to steal. People going around getting soul ties off of Netflix and chill. People make it cool to gang bang. Go and let the hammer go. But they don't realize when they go, it's going to happen to their soul. Every time I turn to the TV, I get an instant headache. All the drama going in the world, we need some peace for goodness sake. Social media ain't doing it better. Well, people talking about getting chill. Disguising all this nonsense. They real smart and very clever. Clickbaiting all the time. Feeling us in like a fish. People struggling, losing jobs, but they don't really give a ish. Stab you in your back, smile, look at you, and blow a kiss. People getting caught in scales. It's livelihoods that they messing with. Glorified violence. That's why they call us savages. Don't talk about the real issues. They put it in the cabinet. When things go wrong, we quick to blame it on the devil. Man up. Responsibility and get it together. We need change. Stop all this nonsense killing. Stop with the crazy division. We need change. Stop with all of this dealing. Stand up for the women and children. We need change. Stop the cussing and fussing. Pretending you don't care about nothing. We need change. Stop the stunting and running. Remember that your life needs something. We need change. Stop all this nonsense killing. Stop with the crazy division. We need change. Stop with all of this dealing. Stand up for the women and children. We need change. Stop the cussing and and pretending you don't care about nothing. We need change. Stop this stunting and funny. Remember that your life means something. We need we change. Need change in our community because there is no unity. I live on the same block as you because of jealousy. You want to kill me? The way to be protected. I got to end up in this drug game. Selling drugs to young girls while you're getting paid. That's a dang shame. We need God to intervene. This nonsense, it needs to stop. Marriage is getting torn apart by pranks to see on TikTok. Kids getting shot and killed while rappers talk about total steel. Y'all say that I am your man. I'm a messenger trying to keep it real. On my knees all the time, praying for this crazy nation. All races join together and stop all this wicked hating. In order to change, we need to stop doing the most to heal from this sickness. We need God as the antidote. We need change. Stop all this nonsense killing. Stop with the crazy division. We need change. Stop with all of this dealing. Stand up for the women and children. We need change. Stop the cussing and fussing. Pretending you don't care about nothing. We need change. Stop the stunting and running. Remember that your life needs something. We need change. Stop all this nonsense killing. Stop with the crazy division. We need change. Stop with all of this dealing. Stand up for the women and children. We need change. Stop the cussing and fussing. Pretending you don't care about nothing. We we need change. Stop this stunting in front and remember that your life means something. We need change. Okay. I love that. Yeah, doing doing like that. Like I time. said, I like it. Yeah. I love it. You hit everything. Like in order, decent and in order. Like, I don't see nothing that you missed out. And that's cool. That's the news right there. What you, everything that you just named is, is all you see on the news. Mm -hmm. And and that what makes me so sick of turning the TV on. Even in the little sitcoms, even in the cartoons now, the mind is being so warped with these babies. And most of these young women are letting the TV raise their babies. Mm-hmm. And that's all they know. They sit them in front of the TV. They don't know what them kids watching. They don't know what come across the TV, even if it is a cartoon. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I like that. So, at this time, we're going to take it to the family um, and get their feedback and their questions for you. Um, 
to let them know, let you know how they feel about your trick. And we're going to um, call on the ones who names, whose hands are raised first. And then anybody else after that is done will be asked to come off mute. Okay. You ready? How you feel about it? Hey, I'm ready. Okay. 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 So first we have not other than Mr. Kerry Lewis. Hey, how y'all doing today on this beautiful Sunday? Doing good. How about yourself? I'm good. DLS Music, what's going on, sir? Man, just just chilling like just chilling, man. Cool, cool. So I am Kevin Lewis of Texas Fleet DJs out here in Houston, Texas. So um been chatting with my man for, for a while, a couple couple weeks. Uh got him on this call, man. We couldn't wait to get him on this call. Uh he has some some great music. Um I heard the music. Unfortunately, I heard the music before the others could. But we all heard that today, and I know they are loving that track, man. So um, tell us about, um, so you're, um, are you working with producers? Do you have your own producers? Do you have, uh, are you producing yourself? What's going on with that part of the music? Uh, that part of the music, um, I got a lot of the um, beats from this uh, one um, producer named uh, Jay Martin. So he had like different stuff on his uh, website. And so I kind of like listened to a lot of beats, uh, Lee well, purchased, purchased a lot of the beats. And as far as like the recording, mixing and mastering, I don't know if y'all kind of see, I kind of do my own uh, recording, mixing and mastering. And so I've been doing that for like 12 years, probably long, a little bit longer than that. And uh, and so as far as the, I don't have like a producer, but I listen to different people's uh, instrumentals and beats. And uh, if I'm really feeling the beat, uh, I come up with a hook, you know, maybe in my head or come up with a song title and then I upload it on my computer or I just listen to it over and over again and try to find something you know, on the, uh, you know, find something to write to. Facts, facts. And yeah, I noticed the, uh, was that a bass back there? Oh, yeah. So you, you get down on the bass? Yeah, just a, just a little bit. I ain't, I ain't, you know, professional like that, but you know, I can hold, I can hold it on just, just a little bit. Just dabble with it a little bit. I, I yeah. feel you, I feel you, I feel you. Make a little tunes with it, okay? Yeah. But yeah, the, uh, the track is slim and, you, and um, so are you performing? Are you are you like currently performing your music at uh locations things of like um, nature? A lot of times, like we have the uh the gospel light on the mic. You know, shout out to uh James Travis. You know, a lot of times when we have those. If I'm uh, if I am DJing, he might call me up there to do a song or something like that. Or even if I'm not, I might do a song. So it's kind of it's sort of like you know doing the uh, you know different um events that might be going on in the. DFW area, but um, the one that's, you know, kind of consistent right now will be light on the mic. So uh, now before then, you know, we had the Christian Lounge in uh, Arlington as well for 10 for ten years. Shout out to uh, Vincent Ellis, a.k.a. Prodigal. Uh, and so right now it's sort of like, you know, doing the, um, if there's an event going on, I might be to, uh, you know, I might minister or might not, because it might be kind of a season where I'm just like, you know, chilling in the background. Cool, cool, cool. So like I said, I'm definitely dig digging the song, digging the message. Like I said Barack Obama is not the only one where we need change. So I, I, I'm feeling that, my man. Cool. Feeling that. Yeah, man. So salute to you, man. Much success to you uh in everything that you do, my man. Thanks. And we're looking forward to hearing more from you. When you have some more music, bring it back to us. We're gonna get you on. All right. For sure. Thank you, Carrie. Is there anyone else who would like to give some feedback? Can y'all hear okay. me? Yes. Okay. Let me come on. Turn this up. Okay. All right. So, um, first off, the other music. Uh, I do have a qu two questions for you. Mm -hmm. um, something that you stated earlier. Uh, the first thing is, I know, and I noticed it in the song, when you were saying, um, 
you didn't want to be judged on either using the word or saying something similar to almost sound like the word. If you you get where I'm going here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, for those that you know, because uh, you know their uh, Christian rap is is a broad, you know, genre, and I feel like uh, you know you have those people that are straggling the fences with that. So how do you, how do you feel about the ones that actually do use the words and do actually have like a parental advisory? on their cover for a gospel rap album? Um, to me, um, who was that artist? Like Seven and Bizzle. Those are the now ones. I say no names. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> they, they're, if anybody really knows that, they're really raw with their mm-hmm. stuff. And yes. so I think for them, and even for me, it's just really expressing the way I feel in that moment. And okay. so, you know, that's how it is when it comes to uh certain stuff. Like if I'm list, if I'm writing to something and I'm really feeling that, you know, um, I might say something similar to that word, but in the mindset, it's like, you know what, that person that you know is out there that's that cusses like a sailor, it might relate to them, even though I'm not saying it. And so it's sort of like I'm a um I'm gonna kind of just put it out there. This is this is how I'm feeling in that moment. Cause as I was writing that line, I said people struggling and losing jobs, but they don't really give up. And so it's like, you know, I really felt that as I was writing because I know people that are struggling and they're losing their jobs because of you know certain circumstances and all this other stuff. So really. For me, as I'm writing or even recording, it's I'm in this zone, and it's pretty much how I feel in that moment. Okay, okay, okay. And then my last question is, for you being a DJ and an artist, which one would you, like, if you couldn't, if you could only do one, which <laughs> one would you rather do more? more? Oh, that is kind of hard, because I, I love DJing, and I love, you know, doing, but I also love um, ministering as well. So I will say music because of the simple fact is when I, before I do a song, I always try to minister. They got people out here that just get up there. They, they'll probably introduce themselves and don't even really talk about the song. And they just get up there and just rap. But the thing is, the difference between a rapper and in the world and the difference between a rapper that's doing you know things for god is the testimony you know do you have do you have the word on the inside of you now given there are some people that are you know babes in christ and they're getting started and stuff like that and they might not be able to talk like i do because if i get on the mic i'm just you know i'm talking and i'm ministering so for those who are you know starting for those who are you know trying to you know get into it you know, they can go and start their song. But for for me, um, I like to minister. I like to try to motivate the best that I can and explain the song. So for when the song, the music comes on, uh, people will have an idea of what I'm about to, the message that I'm about to um, speak. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, all right. Well, like I said, I love the music. Uh, I appreciate you coming through. Um, like Miss Uniqueness said, hope to see you in um, Orlando in July. Because uh, Greek Gospel got some big things coming for the conference. So we're gonna, I'm going to make sure you get uh, all the information as well on that. So, uh, But like I said, I enjoy the music and I can't wait to hear more from you. All right. All right. Thank you, DJ Cyclops. Yes, Next, ma'am. we have not other than Miss Epiphany. Hey. <laughs> Hi, brother. How's it going? Doing good. How about yourself? Good, good. Thank you so much for uh, taking time off for everyone to be able to um, interview you. Um, I just wanted to add, he also has a YouTube channel that he does, uh, you know, he speaks on. It, it helps me, like, tremendously. It's like, you know, I'm like, it could be when he posted, I get a text. You know how you get the alerts. So I set up for the alerts on YouTube. 
So when, um, whenever he posts on the YouTube channel, it'll let me know. But he, it's a, it's a tremendous help. You know, it's. A, I just wanted to let you know that it's been a tremendous help through anything that I went through. Of course, I love all your songs, Stronger. Uh, we need change. You know, I I love all that overflow. You know, I love that when I wear that one out. But you know, it's good to know that you that you. It's not. I think some people think that people that are famous. When we have people that we know that actually love the Lord, they have uh they use that music uh, music for music ministries. You know, they have testimonies. They're going through things. They aren't things are perfect, but we are able to still minister through us being um, perfect, but in God, we're perfect. So, as, you know, I just want to let you know that as a brother in Christ, cause I'm uh, like, I'm the only child, y'all, but these, they are like, truly like my brothers and sisters. You know, it's like, I feel like, you know, if you don't have the kind words, um, they always have like kind words or soft-hearted words, you know, to encourage you or just when you need the extra push that they could say their testimony right before their song and you're like, wow, I didn't know that about them. Or, you know, you know, you'd be like, man, they're going through that too. Or, you know, it doesn't, not saying because they're going through something bad, it makes you feel good. Not that type, you know, on someone's demise, but just to be like, it's kind of like, and then when they say what they did to get through it, it can sometimes help other people because you never know who you're helping. You know, that's why I tell people, if you feel like you have something to say, say it. Don't be worried about how somebody's going to judge you because even out of all the 1,500 people in the room, it might be that one person that will be like, it could be a low lifted off of them. But your your music has definitely uh blessed me. Uh just you know, being able to know you throughout these years has definitely blessed me. You've always been uh kind hearted and always you know, with light on the mic. Uh like you said, shout out to Jay uh Jay Jay uh James Travis <laughs> and Vincent. He's the original um DJ with uh the Christian Lounge, y'all. So he was he's like and then he also has the you still have the uh CMOS? Oh yeah, I still do the DL Naturals as well. Yeah, helps with your mind and your body. But you know, but that so my question is after all of that, is if you had to collaborate with uh an artist, who who would you want to collaborate with? Man, that's 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 actually pretty um now you're talking about like industry wise, just a broad you know, like, anybody have to be somebody famous. It could just be somebody you just like, man, I want to collaborate with them. Um, man, it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of dope artists in the DFW alone. But like, if I was gonna say industry wise, I'm gonna say KB because I like his passion and his uh, you know, his drive. Um, let me see, DFW artists. It's a lot, you know. Uh, let me see. You know, um, not like Adrian. I like Adrian Butler. You know, I like the the you know the you know how he brings that style of metaphors and things into his music. Um, I've worked with uh Jay Jones. Um, worked with you know a lot of people. Um, and it's kind of hard because there's a lot. It's a lot of dope artists in the uh in the DFW area. Man, it's kind of it's kind of hard to pick. So this it's kind of one of those ones that I plead the fifth. <laughs> and so, uh, so Another yeah. One. Huh? That's cool. You said we, uh, you said KB. Yeah. KB. Okay. Okay. So, like I like I was listening to matter of fact I was listening to his album earlier. You know the you know the uh, and so I'm listening to how passionate. He is, and I noticed that throughout the years, even being in the industry, he still kind of stays, you know, keeping the message of preaching Christ. Yeah. And so um, it's kind of hard as far as the DFW because there's so many people to, uh, you know, to like choose from to collaborate. Uh, I'll say someone like, uh, you know, Chosen, you know, I like his uh, his passion and his music. Uh I mean, um, Yellow World. I know he don't go by Beast no more. So Yellow World now. Now it's going to come to me. Yellow World. Um, God Nation. Uh, right. They, they, them two. When they was, you know, collabing and doing things together, man. They, their passion behind it. You know, even though they ain't got a jump or nothing like that, they sit there and the passion in their music is gonna get you rocking. So yeah. definitely would be like, uh, um. Chosen, Yellow World, um, 
Let me see. Shout out to Big Rick Bo Sticky. Um, yeah. Uh, Big Rick, Big Rick Bo Sticky, uh, Adrian Butler. Um, yeah. Let me see. There's a lot of there's a lot of different artists that I'm trying to you know think of right off the top, but those are like the top ones that I would definitely um, you know collab with and do some music with, or even just uh, you know if we can just chit chat and just discuss the word, or just get in front of some people and do some mission work and helping out those who need some help, you know, even just awesome. that alone too. Right, that'll be awesome. Well, that was all the questions I have. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right. Thank you, Epiphany. Is there anyone else who would like to give any feedback? Okay, if not, um, I had like two questions for you. And um, one of those questions is, have you had your I made it moment yet? Um, hmm. It's actually kind of hard. Well, it's not really. Um, I think the last um uh, when I re when I released Lost in Transition Volume Two, I feel that I made it, but also in the midst of that had a breakthrough. Because uh the Lost in Transition Volume One was more like me bringing in and telling who I am, but Volume Two, it took like what five years or more of so much trauma and so much drama going on for me to really make that CD. And so it, it kind of feels like, you know, um, I had a breakthrough in some areas of my life, not all, because there's a lot of stuff that I'm still dealing with. So I feel that I've made it even um, dropping that project because it, it really mean, it really meant so much to me. Okay. And the last question that I have to ask a lot of people that I've learned is what legacy or impact do you leave behind through your work and your contributions? Mm, what work legacy um, that that you can say that I um, also kind-hearted, um, live with integrity, um, I'm ambitious, motivated um you know um i'm going to be able to you know do my best to help you to uh to motivate you and to really just you know lift up your spirit even when you're feeling down so that's the impact that i want to be able to leave so if i was the if i was to die right now i would literally be remembered for every every word that I've said, every conversation that I've given to someone, every time I minister to someone, even as far as the music, and they can all say that, you know, hey, that that person right there, that man right there motivated me to uh, to look at myself. That man motivated me to uh, to step my game up. That man motivated me so I can, um, you know, not look at my situation as too bad that if he went through that same situation or those those particular things in life that if he can make it through, I can make it through. I know that's right. I like that. That is, I couldn't even think of a better answer. That was a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. Do you have um any social media handles so that we all can keep up with you? Um, on Instagram, it is DLS underscore DTX. On Facebook, it is Derek Silman. Um, on my YouTube, it is uh, D is D. Dot Silman on my YouTube, like what a, a DJ Epiphany was talking about, because I also uh, minister on there as well. That's actually how I, I took the music and I turned it into doing ministry on, on my YouTube platform. And so, uh, and also D Lit Entertainment on uh, YouTube, you will find some of the uh, videos where I am uh, DJing some. So it'll be the main ones would be Instagram, DLS underscore DTX on Facebook. It's Derek Silman. So definitely check me out, follow me on there. You'll see a lot of stuff. <laughs> you do a lot of okay. stuff. Okay, I hope the family recorded that information. 
I will be following you on all the platforms. Um, do you have any closing remarks for us? Um, stay motivated, stay encouraged, um, stay doing the best that you can. We all going to fall. We, gonna, we all going to have our issues. I have my issues too. So stay doing the best that you can. Try not to overdo it. Try to relax. Stay motivated. Stay keeping God first. Awesome. Well, family, I would like to thank you all for joining to this call, being a part and being supportive. And one thing that I've learned in life, that the people that can tell the best stories are the ones that wasn't there. So therefore, you guys are, I'm grateful for you guys being here and able to um, hear his testimony, hear his music, which was actually some great music. And I would like to thank you for coming here to share your story with us. You could have chosen to be anywhere else and do anything else but you chose to rock out with us today. So thank you. And to the family, this does include the, concludes the call. Y'all have a blessed night. All righty.